Hey guys, so I got some pretty interesting news for you here, really good news, and that is that the Model 3 long range is likely going to be coming back very soon because Tesla is already revamping the production line of the Project Highland, and I think there was a really good reason why the long range Model 3 was off the shelves for such a long time. Now, the main thought to this is that they needed an extra spare line just to work on Project Highland alone, and where else to do it better than the original factory at Fremont? Now, how it currently is right now is that the Model 3, the base model and the performance model is available for you to purchase. Now how it works is that the base model and the performance model being on the shelves right now makes it a lot easier because they have one separate line to work on the newer vehicle and it just removes a lot of other inconsistencies when they are producing it because the differences between the performance and the long range is very small. They prefer to keep it two separate lines right now, the base model being that it doesn't have all these performance parts and then the performance version which has all those parts in place. Whereas if they have an additional line for the long range, they would have to share the parts with the Model 3 base model and the long range and then with the long range it also has to share parts with the performance because all the interior trims and features features are from the performance model. So you can see here how that brings up some difficulties and it's best to just remove it completely and have room for the next iteration of the 3. Alright, so they just got approval for their filing revisions of the manufacturing process, meaning that a bunch of these robot arms on the assembly line has to be demolished and then a newer versions of it has to come in play. Now normally how it works with manufacturing and assembly lines is that they can tweak the robot arms to just work however the revisions of the vehicles are and unless there's a major redesign they're likely just going to keep the robot arms the way it is all the way until its final lifeline. So the fact that they had filings for demolition and finally it got approved it means that this is a major redesign in some way the Model 3 is going to be changed from the exterior and the interior because there's no way that if this was a simple redesign or a simple revision that they couldn't just simply reprogram the robots to do whatever it takes. Now I know there's a lot more to it than simply just the robot arms and it looks like a bunch of chaos inside of the factory. We don't know too much about it but I'm sure there's a lot of other steps that needs to be done as well and these have to be demolished for newer versions of it to come in. Now a lot of us have been waiting for the long range model to arrive again because the base model just doesn't suit their needs and the performance model just has parts of it that doesn't work with everyone. Now you guys are probably wondering how the performance model doesn't work other than just being financially impossible. It's just the fact that it has summer tires coming from factory and a lot of places around the world that have winter throughout the year. You're going to notice that the summer tires really suck and you're going to have to swap it out for all weather or winter tires. So imagine having to put in additional cost to buying your performance model 3 and then the fact that the vehicle in itself is just an overkill for most people we want the range but we really don't need the performance and that's where the long range model comes in play so when it was taken off the shelves it said that 2023 we're gonna get it back however now it's february 2023 still nothing but when you think of it it's actually a good thing i mentioned in previous videos that right now isn't the best time to buy it because they are revamping the whole design and they're going to be putting hardware for radar and whatever interior and exterior changes there are to it if you pick up a tesla right at this point even the long range model you're likely going to lose out even with the incentives because as soon as the new vehicle gets announced or released your vehicle is definitely going to drop in value now i've talked a lot about project highland in previous videos if you guys want to check that out I'll drop a link in the description below but that highlights all of the things we should be seeing but let's talk a little bit about it in this video as well just to refresh you guys a little bit so in the past couple months we've seen a lot of model 3s on the road that have the front and the rear bumpers covered up now this probably indicates that we're gonna get a new front bumper and a rear bumper but there is chances that we're gonna get new taillights and new headlights as well because of where they're being covered now there's also the likelihood that tesla is doing this just to psych us out and that we're focusing on the front and rear bumpers whereas they were doing internal changes to the interior and other parts of the exterior now you guys probably know at this point if you just count it down that it's been roughly about five years or even more for the model 3 the design is getting a little bit old and because it was very similar to the model s and the model x they did a redesign of two of those other vehicles at least sort of a revision where they got newer taillights and headlights the model s plaid even got wider flares and wider fenders so it looks really beast right now in person but the model 3 honestly in my opinion it kind of looks like a beaver or a duck or something like that the front end just doesn't look that good as time went on it kind of just caught on and i'm comfortable with the model 3 design now but then when the model y came out it just looks completely fugly now my goodness that thing is huge the back end it's kind of decent but overall 
it's just a bad design and that's due to the fact that it took the platform of the Model 3 and literally just humped it up a little bit. So that's what we got with the Model Y. Now I don't know about you guys but this is just my opinion and what I'm seeing right in front of me. But you guys have your own thoughts on this and I know that a lot of people love their Model Y but if you just compare it to some other SUVs out there, the Model Y just doesn't look that good. So yeah, the same goes for the Model 3 as well and it's time to get a brand new design. I know that the Model Y already has structural battery but I don't know if that's the indication we're getting from this Project Highland right here. What we did get confirmation on from Elon was that Project Highland is happening and the fact that there is going to be a production rate of two times that of Model 3 and Y combined. That means that whatever this vehicle is, it's going to sell like hotcakes because it's going to be substantially cheaper. Now I don't know in terms of hardware wise what we're going to get, but likely we're going to get hardware for the new radar and this is going to future prove it for future iterations of the software in full self driving. And Elon has said that they are going to remove parts of the vehicle that isn't really important to customers customers, they don't see much use in it. And then they're gonna put all their efforts into focusing on things that customers do actually use, like the MCU, like possibly the newer seats with maybe massage chairs, with ambient lighting or proper ambient lighting and proper tilt screen for when you wanna view movies or play games. Possibly, and fingers crossed here, we do get a rear screen just like the Model S and Model X. Yeah, I know one of you guys mentioned Steam in the comments and I took that from you, but yeah, like I don't know why the Model 3 and why I can't play Steam even though it has the new Ryzen chip. I know the GPU is not there, but it's just so unfair. But yeah, I think the real important reason why Tesla is doing this right now is with the recent price cuts, there are a lot more competition out there even though you guys don't think so. The price cut really just puts it in line with what other manufacturers are doing right now with their EVs. Their EVs are really cheap. Take a look at BYD, NEO, Xpeng. They are really competitive right now and even with the recent price drop, it kind of just puts them right into where customers want it. But the thing is, when you do sit inside of a NEO, an Xpeng, or a BYD, you're gonna notice the difference between the Model 3 and them. The luxuriousness, the features that really are important to people are nowhere to be seen inside of a Model 3. So yeah, if Tesla doesn't catch up in terms of luxury and the features that we really want as consumers, they are gonna lose out a big time compared to a lot of other EVs out there. But yeah guys, take it how you want it. I know there's a lot of Tesla fans out there that vouch for Tesla no matter what. They love the simplistic design and everything. But honestly, who wouldn't want massaging and cooled air conditioned seats and ambient lighting? But anyways, this is it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please hit the subscribe, that notification bell, and it will keep you guys as updated as possible with anything in the EV space as well as Tesla. So yeah, just to wrap it up, this is John once again. Peace out.